So, do you pay a fortune for cloud storage? So why not build your own cloud with this? What's up guys, welcome back to Michael's Tech Talk. I work in IT, I am very well versed in the way of the NAS drive. Now I will be 100% straight up and honest, I am a big fan of QNAP for storage. The likes of QNAP and Synology are typically the go-tos for NAS drives. They're feature rich and they're very well known. So uh, I always like to sort of stick with what I know, uh, as do a lot of people. I have seen new green NASs come up on YouTube all the time and I'm thinking, I would love to go and try one out, but can I make that jump? Can I replace my QNAP with one of these? And then you green hit me up. They said, Michael, we want to send you one of our NAS drives. Let us know what you think of it and we'll go from there. So. Here it is. So big shout out to you Green for sending this over. This is not a sponsored video. However, they did send this over to me for review. So everything you're going to see in this video will be my honest opinion for what it's worth. So the first big question, why build your own cloud? Why set up a NAS drive at home for storage? Well, in this day and age, we rely heavily on cloud storage. You've got the likes of Google Drive, iCloud, Dropbox, Box, uh, 365's OneDrive, I mean, it, it is endless, right? So there's so many different things out there. There's so many different tiers and pricing and all that kind of thing. But basically what you're doing is you're paying to maintain somebody else's servers. Pretty much, that's in a nutshell, that's what it is. All these companies have their own data centers and you're paying for a slice of it. Pretty simple. Whereas if you were to build your own storage at home with the likes of one of these NAS drives, then that's your storage that's local at home. You have full control over it and you have full access of what goes in and out of it, which is pretty good. The cost overlay may be a little bit more to buy this out, right? But it is yours and it will forever be yours. And if you are using a lot of cloud storage, this could pay for itself. So let's talk cost. So for cloud storage, typically for around a two terabytes worth of data, you'll maybe pay between 80 to 90, maybe a hundred pound a year in storage for two terabytes, right? So you might think that's not an overly big amount, but that's how they get you. Because then once you pay for your two terabytes of storage, and then once you start to use that, and then that starts to get full, and that then starts to go up and up and up, and then that say 80 pound a year will then soon become 150 pound a year, 200 pound a year, 300 pound a year, and so on. So as your needs grow, everything else will grow with it. And then before you know it, you're going, why am I spending 500 pound a year on cloud storage? That is mental. Whereas yes, the cost outlay for a NAS drive like this one, for this configuration here, I have this standard with eight gig of RAM currently. I have four drives in this and they are four terabyte drives. So I have these striped together in a RAID 5, which gives me approximately 12 terabytes worth of storage with redundancy as well. So if I have a disk fail, I can pull out a disk, put a new disk in, and it'll repair and I'll not lose any data. That's great. So the cost itself for the chassis, you're talking roughly about 479, that's without disks. And then for the four terabyte disks that I went for, you're talking roughly about 87 pound a disk. So yes, I know when you put that down on paper and you think, whoa, whoa, that's that's a lot of money up front. Yes, it is. It is a lot of storage as well. So it all depends on your needs, really. You know, if you're going to need a massive amount of storage and you're constantly going to upgrade, this can pay for itself over a period of time. It is all down to your needs at the end of the day. Another thing is you're not locked in because what you pay for is what you have. So you're not having them to, you're not forced then to go and buy tiers of what of all these different types of cloud storage. Whereas with this, yes, you'll you'll pay for your storage up front with your disks, but you have the flexibility. So this, you can customize this for drive bays. You can customize this up to 136 terabyte if you wanted to. That's how big you can go with this, all in this little box. That's pretty good. So this model here is the DXP 4800 Plus, and it is a pretty beasty little machine. I will say it is very very well made. It is. This is a fantastic uh, aluminium chassis. It comes in this nice funky gray color, which is right up my street. And the specs are as follows. So this is rocking the four SATA drive bays, which like I said, is customizable up to 136 terabytes. It does have two M.2 NVMe SSD slots, which is pretty awesome. So if you want to set up caching, that's really good and it'll give you an extra bit of performance. It comes with an Intel 8505 CPU. This is a five core processor. It comes with six threads. 
It's pretty beefy compared to some other NAS drives, which is really good. Comes standard with 8GB of RAM installed, but you can expand this up to 64GB of RAM. It supports RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, and RAID 10. It has two network cards on it. One supports 2.5 gigabit speeds and the other supports a whopping 10 gigabit speed which is really cool it also comes with usb 3.2 ports there's an sd card slot in the front it is a usb c as well and it does come with hdmi which will output 4k video so if you want to make this into a little media center you're well covered so what that all basically means in terms of raw specs this goes toe to toe with the likes of qnap and synology but definitely is a little bit more competitive on, on price so for this build i installed four four terabyte discs and i configured them in a raid 5 so that gives me approximately 12 terabytes worth of storage with redundancy if i have a drive fail i could swap it out put another drive in and it will rebuild and i'll not lose any data in theory as long as another disc doesn't fail that'd be awkward it comes standard with 8GB of RAM, which for a lot of people is okay. Now, I will be configuring this not only for storage, but I will be configuring this as a media server as well. I will install Plex on this, so I will beef this up at a later stage. I'll put some extra RAM in it. I'll put those SSDs into those SSD slots, and we'll set up caching just to get a little bit more performance out of it. But out of the box, it's pretty decent with 8GB of RAM as standard, and it is expandable up to 64GB. So depending on what usage you're going to do on this, you have options. So I connected this up to my 10 gigabit network and then configured the OS, set it all up. It was pretty straightforward. It took no more than 20 minutes to get everything all set up from scratch. So let's talk real world performance then. Like I said, I have configured this, set this up as a Plex server, also as my storage server as well. And I will say this thing chews through 4K video really really well my QNAP is getting on a little bit now and my QNAP i think is maxed out at 8 gig of ram with a celeron processor so this is a massive jump and this is handling a lot of my media a lot better than my QNAP did which i will be honest has taken me by surprise because i really love the the QNAP and their hardware and their os so that has really taken me by surprise because the same equivalent spec of this for a QNAP is a lot more money. This also runs Docker and Docker can run lots of different virtual containers, which is really awesome. If you wanna run different services on this through Docker, you can do it and it's pretty good. So, so far, it's handled everything I've threw at it with ease, no, no problems. It runs really, really quiet as well, both with the fans and surprisingly the discs, even though they're mechanical discs, they're not overly noisy, which is pretty good. So let's talk pros. In my opinion, the value of this is really good. Now, you green do the, these models in a two bay, a four bay, a six bay, eight bays, whatever you need. And there is some pretty good value out there for these NAS drives, I will say. I'm really impressed with that. 2.5 gigabit and 10 gigabit network speeds as standard is really, really good. There's no additional cards needed for high speed networking. I love that. The expandable RAM and storage is also a big tick for me. Uh, my older QNAP, I was only really able to, exp to expand RAM. I couldn't install SSDs. Again, like I say, it's maybe more of an age thing, more than a, like a modern QNAP issue, but my current QNAP, I couldn't do that. So yeah being able to put so much more ram and so much more storage into this is a big tick for me it does look really sleek this dark gray metallic finish looks good we've got a cr uh, we've got a really good uh, magnetic fan cover on the back as well which you can take off and clean and that sort of thing it's really good it beats a white nas drive doesn't it <laughs> my last pro is the ugos now i like I said, I'm a big QNAP fan. I wasn't really overly sure how I would take to UGOS. I've, I'd never used it before. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. But you know what? I really did. Even through a browser or through the mobile app, which again surprised me how, how good it was. Really impressed me. The functionality, the sleekness of it, and it's easy to use. Like there was a lot of wizards and there was a lot of things that, obviously as an IT professional, there's a lot of things where I would just go straight into the advanced stage and do my little tinkering and bits and bobs. But they've obviously went down the route of being able to have anybody set one of these up, which is a good thing in my opinion. So yeah, I really do like the OS of this so far. So the, the only real con that I have with this is UG OS. Now the OS on this, like I said, is easy to use and whatnot. Some advanced features like, you know, doing more with virtual machines, for example, or deep network customization, these, features aren't built in as standard 
just yet. You can still do quite a bit with this, but if you're someone that likes to do fine tuning of your setup, you might need to dive into manual setups and workarounds for some features with this. For me, not a big issue. Everything that I want this to do works perfectly, but I know for someone who is looking a bit more with this type of NAS drive, might find some obstacles in place. But that being said, for your average home user, your small office user, the likes of myself, content creator that wants to store their their footage, wants to take backups of computers and things like that there, it's perfect. It's really perfect. So final thoughts. What is my final thoughts on the DXP 4800 Plus NAS drive from Ugreen? I will say I went into this with low expectations. Like I've said many times, I'm a bit of a snob when it comes to this sort of stuff. So I went in with low expectations thinking, eh, it's not going to be better than a Q9. But it did actually impress me. It really did. And if this is where these NAS drives are at this state in the game, you green have a pretty bright future because I am really impressed with this. Really impressed. Uh, it's well spec'd, it's fast, it's expandable. The expandable options in this are fantastic. They really are. And the key thing here, if you're wanting to cut down the spend of that cloud storage and you're wanting to build your own storage, this is definitely the answer. Without handing over your data to third parties or paying those monthly fees, this is worth a serious look. So if you are wanting to pick up your own Ugreen NAS drive, Ugreen have a special promotion on where you can get 20% off the cost of a NAS drive from Ugreen. I will leave you links in the description down below. Those links will give you a direct 20% discount off a Ugreen NAS to go on. Go build your own cloud. So, have you any questions about the Ugreen DXP 4800 Plus NAS drive? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll happily answer any questions that you have. Hit me up in the comments down below. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe and ring that little bell to be notified of new videos just like this one. And keep it logged to the channel if you want to see some more down to earth tech review and accessory videos. You know exactly where to come. And until the next one, I'll catch you later. Beastie. Beastie!